Today we are going to talk about multiplicative and additive comparisons. This is a concept that we um, talk about a lot in fourth grade, and so this is our first delve into multiplication, and we start with this idea. So we've been learning about this in class, and we're going to kind of go review what we've done so far so that um, you can do some extra practice and understand when you're working on it at home and on homework. So a multiplicative comparison, let's start there, is multiplicative is a word that's new to most of our fourth graders, but it sounds very much like multiplication. And that's exactly what we want fourth graders to think of when they think of a multiplicative comparison. It's basically a comparison of numbers, the value of numbers, um, that uses multiplication. So when we're talking about multiplicative comparisons, we'll see phrases that a certain number is blank times as many as another number, or half as many, because multiplica multiplicative comparisons will cover um, both multiplication and division, because multiplication and division are inverse operations. They are connected and related. So it's called multiplicative, but we can also talk about something being two times smaller or three times smaller or half as many, where we would be thinking about you know, dividing by two is one way to think about that. Um, so I wrote an example here. When you look at this equation, 8 times 2 equals 16. So today we talked about just the vocabulary of it, being able to, to recognize that 16 is two times as many as eight. Or we could say 16 is eight times as many as two. So whenever it really has this part, this times as many, that's a big clue to fourth graders that the relationship is through multiplication. Those numbers have a connection. Additive comparisons are using the operations of addition and subtraction to compare numbers. They're um, comparisons that kids have been doing, you know, from kindergarten to third grade. When you're talking about how much more is one number than another, or how much less is one number than another. So, for example, if I had 5 plus 3 is 8, I can say that 8 is 3 more than 5. Or I could say 8 is 5 more than 3. I could also do some less than. I could say that um, 3 is 2 less than 5. So no times as many, just talking about how many more or how many less. There's no relationship through multiplication. And those are called additive comparisons, even though sometimes you might be subtracting to solve them. The idea, again, that addition and subtraction are kind of connected Multiplication and division are connected and they stick together in their comparison groups. So I'm going to take you through three problems um, that we have been working on this type of problem and how we're setting up our equations, thinking through the problem, um, making sure that our answer makes sense and is reasonable, and also drawing a quick little visual model to support our thinking. Tonight's homework, um, students have to identify whether it's a multiplicative or an additive comparison, so we'll be doing that as well. So if you look at number one, and with all three of these problems, they're all about the same two people, Bella and Ryan and reading books. So just pay close attention to how the um, phrasing and the wording and the strategies change for each problem. So number one, Bella read seven books. Ryan read three times as many books as Bella. How many books did Ryan read? So we kind of break it apart. We think about it. Well, I know that Bella read seven. I have that right there. Bella read seven. Ryan read three times as many books as Bella. So I'm going to notice right away this times as many. And I'm going to be able to identify that as a multiplicative comparison. Multiplicative. Because it's asking me times as many, I'm going to have to think about multiplication here. 
And so right away, I'm gonna, since I know it's multiplicative, I'm going to do blank times blank equals blank. I'm gonna set up my equation, and I'm gonna fill in the missing parts. So let me think about what I, what I have. Bella read seven, Ryan read three times what Bella read, which is seven. How many books did Ryan read? So I don't know how many books Ryan read, but I do know that he read three times more. So he read more than Bella. In multiplication, the biggest number will always be in this space right here where your product would go. So I know that Ryan has to have the biggest number in this story because his is three times as big as Bella, so it has to be bigger. So right here is Ryan. I don't know how many books Ryan, but when I multiply my numbers together, that's gonna give me the answer for Ryan's books. So now I know that I need to take Bella's books and I have to do it times three. If I do seven times three, I have 21 equals R. And sometimes we're gonna, um, Try to encourage the kids more often as we go through the year to use variables for unknowns. You can also use a, a box or a question mark to kind of indicate, well, that's the one I'm looking for. And just keep your work organized. But using R for Ryan is a good strategy. So I know that Ryan read 21. Did Ryan read more than Bella? Yes, 21 is bigger than seven. And I, to make 21, I needed to do times three. So I've answered the question, I have used my equation, and to draw a visual model, I'm gonna use bars really quick. I'm gonna have bars for Ryan, I'm gonna have a bar for Bella. And I'm gonna think about, well, I know Bella's bar is seven, like the value of seven. How many sevens did I need to get to Ryan's value? Three times, seven, seven, seven. So that's just a little visual model, model that shows that relationship. Three sevens made Ryan's total of 21. Like that. Let's try number two. Bella read 10 books. This is five times as many books as Ryan read. How many books did Ryan read? Again, the, almost the very same question but asked a little bit differently. So we have to be like math detectives. So let me think, I know that Bella read 10 again. Okay, so I have Bella's number again. This is five times as many books as Ryan. Well, it's not telling me Ryan read five times as many. It's telling me this, this something is five times bigger. Well, what is this talking about? This is talking about the 10 books that Bella read. That number 10, is five times as many books as Ryan read. So that means five times as many, Bella, since she read five times as many, read the most. Again, times as many, we're identifying that one as our multiplicative comparison. Oh, let me squeeze that in here. Multiplicative. So I'm gonna set up my equation spaces, blank times blank equals blank, and I'm going to think about this. All right, so this number 10 is five times bigger than whatever Ryan read, so it has to be the most. Anything times as much is bigger. So 10 is going to be the biggest quantity in this story, and that belongs to Bella. Where does the biggest quantity go in a multiplication equation? In the product. So blank times blank is going to make 10. Well, what other number do I have in my story? Oh, I have a five. Okay, so I'm going to put that there because I know that has to be one of my numbers. And now I'm solving for the missing, and now this is my R. I'm solving for a missing factor. Five times blank equals 10. Well, if I know my multiplication facts, I know or I can skip count by fives. I know that five times two equals 10, R equals two. Ryan read two books. To get to Bella's books, I had to multiply by five and that was 10. 
Um, this is a tricky one. This is the one that throws kids off because they want to see that 10 and that 5 and just multiply them together. But that does not solve the problem accurately. They have to be thoughtful in thinking about what is going to, who is going to have the most in the story. And in this case, Bella's number is the most because it's times as many. This one's especially tricky. We'll keep working on those. Bar model for this one would be the same kind of thing. I would set up, and I know I'm getting a little squished in here. Let me see if I can put here. I have a Ryan bar and a Bella bar. I know that Ryan had two, and I would need five bars. And for the sake of space, I'm going to kind of go under here. He would have five bars, and all of those bars would be a two. Two, 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 two. Forgive my spacing there. We got a little smushy on our whiteboard. So five groups of two makes um, Bella's total of 10. Multiplicative comparison. Those are the two type we're going to see. Let's try number three. Bella read 12 books. Ryan read two more books That is supposed to be Ryan. Bella read two more books than Ryan. Let's fix that real quick. And I didn't have room for the question, but how many books did Ryan read? So now I'm looking and I don't see any times as many, half as many, but I see the word more and only two more, two more. Well, if I need to figure out that somebody else has two more than me, then I would add two to my number to get their number. This is an additive. <coughs> Comparison. I need to add to solve for this problem or possibly subtract, but because it says more, I need to add. So I'm going to think about this. I need to take Bella's number of 12. Ryan read two. All right, I am messing up this name at the end like crazy. I am sorry, Bella. Ryan read two more books than Bella. 12 plus 2 is 14. How many books did Ryan read? He read 14. Um, for these, we're not really so much doing a bar. We could draw little bars for them too, but they don't have this, the same relationship. I would just have a bar of you know 12 for Bella and then a bar of 14 for Ryan to show that that was the additive comparison. It's a little tricky at first, and we're in the very beginning, um, so it takes some practice. That's why we have this video sending out so that, um, that kids can review the information on the video, parents can review it at home, and support their children in math. I hope that answered lots of questions about this big concept. Um, stay tuned for more math videos in your future.